everyone. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. Welcome back to Build at Home. I'm really excited today. I'm going to be chatting with chef and TV personality Ann Burrell. But first, I want to remind you guys that because of school closing, there are a lot of kids out there who are missing meals. In fact, 234 school meals have been missed due to school closing. Um, the campaign No Kid Hungry is looking to help out these communities. So if you're looking for a way to get involved, if you want to donate some money, make sure you visit nokidhungry.org. Now I want to turn the page a little bit and talk to Anne. Anne, what's going on? How are you? Where are you? Hello, hello, Brittany, and hi, everybody out there. I am um, in my hometown of Casanova, New York. It's about five hours from New York City. This is the town I grew up in. I'm in my mother's uh, loft apartment, and I'm here with my family. We've been here for, I think, nine days so far. Um, and we are just really trying to do our best to be social distancing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my family, my, my sister and my boyfriend and everyone have still had to continue their regular work hours. So, um, you know, the kids are all trying to do school. So I've been feeding people, you know, my, my entire family. So nine of us all together, um, a couple of meals a day, which includes two vegans and one gluten-free person, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's, I've, I've been busy cooking and very yeah. happily so. Doesn't seem like you're getting much of any sort of break. You're, you're working. <laughs> but, you know, but it, it is so, I'm so happy to be doing that, to, to be useful and to be doing something because otherwise it's just like, you know, you kind of like fall into, to a pattern of like boredom and then, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, and then you start thinking about the big picture of stuff and how long is this going to be? When's it going to be over? So I would much rather be busy and uh, being productive rather than just sitting around. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, when they talk about cooking, they talk about it being like a meditation or be it being therapeutic. And there's so much anxiety right now. I would imagine just like using your hands probably helps. <laughs> I mean, it just, always when I'm not feeling good anyway, I go in my kitchen and I turn on music and I start cooking and it automatically makes me feel better. So this is a way when we are all, sorry, we're social distanced, but during the day, everyone is scattered to their own corners um, doing their work mm -hmm. because, you know, regular life must continue on in extreme circumstances. So if I, when we all come together for, for lunch and dinner, um, you know, it still is a way to bring us all together. And then everyone goes back their own separate way again. <laughs> and I have to ask, a lot of people are using this time to uh, develop new hobbies or to work on things that they've been wanting to do for a long time. Have you put the, you know, dust off of anything and tried anything new or different during this time? Well, I mean, it's also, you know, what I've been doing is, you know, when it's, it's, when you're a cook like I am, whether it's in a restaurant or on the Food Network, you're so used to being able to have any any ingredients that you want. So it's like, oh, I need this and specialty that and all that kind of stuff. And so to be in a town of 3,000 people with just one local grocery store mm -hmm. to have those kind of ingredients, it's making me think, okay, well, it, it's kind of making me say, I there's a book in this. I think my next cookbook mm. is coming out of this. So um, all of these recipes that I'm, I'm just doing off the cuff for my family, I think we're going to see winding up in a new cookbook. Oh, I love that tease, Anne. That's amazing. <laughs> right? And I mean, it's, during for, this it's for the everyday home cook without of your just regular grocery store, without specialty ingredients. It's what do you do with it as with your, your creativity and your imagination as a cook. Yeah, which you are going to show us a little demo uh, in a little bit. But I first, I want to check in about Vegas Chef Prize Fight, the show on uh, Food Network that you host. I checked out an episode. It is tense. So can you just take us through uh, the kind of what the show is about? So Vegas Chef Prize Fight is, um, is a show we filmed, by the way, we filmed in September. So we did it when everything was safe and Vegas was still wide open. 
and you know we hope that Vegas is going to get back to its former glory when it when all of uh, life gets back to to what it used to be. But it is um, a bunch of chefs that I brought in, um, eight of them all together. What we started with. And they are all doing sort of the ultimate job interview. Um, I, I put them through a series of tests um, at different outlets within the uh, Caesars empire. Mm -hmm. um, so we, one week we're at Mr. Chow, one week we were at Guy Fieri's place, El Boro Baracho. Um, the episode that is airing this week, we are at Giada De Laurentiis's place mm -hmm. and these chefs all have to sort of um, to to work together to create food that would be um, able to be on the menu in each one of these places. Um, and at the end, the last chef standing gets their own restaurant on the strip, a ten million dollar <laughs> restaurant. I mean, so you can see it's a huge prize. Um, so it's a hugely difficult job interview. We need yeah. to make sure, or especially, I mean, I was given the task of finding these chefs and putting them through this job interview. I want to make sure that the chef who it makes it all the way to the end is able and ready to accept that huge job that they're going to get. I mean, a brand new restaurant, it was in the midst of being built um, before all of the coronavirus mm -hmm. situation uh, hit us. So, I mean, it really is a big job. It's a huge responsibility. And, but I mean, when you make it as a chef in Vegas, you make it anywhere. And I mean, these chefs are very seasoned, pun intended. Um, okay. They have worked for decades. They're so impressive. Um, what are some of the backstories of the chefs here? Because they all seem super accomplished already. So, I mean, we have chefs from all over the place. I mean, I pulled chefs from, there is, um, there was a couple people from Chicago, there were people from Arizona, there um, was uh, a woman that spent her career working in the military, um, you know, because it's like a chef is not just someone that can cook really good food. You have to be an amazing leader. You have to be an amazing teacher. There's also the, the business side of being a chef, you know, like the, the food costs, labor costs, all mm -hmm. of this kind of stuff. So I pulled chefs from all over the place to, to really um, see who was going to be the best person for this job. Yes. And you are a tough host. I mean, you do not a tough job. On them. <laughs> but I mean, they are chefs. This is not like the worst cooks in America, which is, uh, yeah. you know, my, my normal or regular gig. I I would um, be. <laughs> this is, I mean, these are chefs. They know what it takes to be a chef and to be a chef of a $10 million restaurant. It is a tough, hard job. So that's the way I am with them during their job interview. I am brutally honest with them because if I'm not, if I don't do a good job with at my job, finding these mm -hmm. chefs, Caesars isn't going to be so happy with me. This I take true. my job very seriously. <laughs> you do. And then but you make them better because by the time we get to the end of the episode, you can see them taking in your notes and mm -hmm. they kind of push themselves, which is what we want to see as viewers. So it, it is so it me out and excites me. <laughs> they know that I'm talking to them chef to chef. Yeah. So they know what I'm saying. I'm not just critiquing them just for the sake of critiquing them. What I say is absolutely true. And they come back and they're like, yeah, you're <laughs> right. I know. And it's like, don't try to fleece me. I mean, I have excellent crap detectors. So yeah. You're like, I know. Like, I know. I know. And because I also know how it is to be on the other side. I know I've done a tremendous amount of competitive cooking in my career. So I know how that rolls too. You know, and you know how to see through the BS. Um, yeah. So I know you are going to do a little cooking demo for us. What are you going to make? So I'm going to, uh, yes, I am going to do a little cooking demo. I'm going to make um, something that um, is fun and delicious and easy and a giant crowd pleaser. Um, I'm going to make a uh, really quick and easy pork tacos Ooh. with pickled onions and lime crema. Okay. So, mm. 
Uh huh. All right. Can we get started? This is the fun part. My favorite yeah. part of cooking. Okay. So um, I have all of my mise en place here. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to start off to make a quick pickled onion or what I like to say a quickle. We're going to do a quickle. Um, so I have sliced red onions. I have half a cup of water and I'm going to match that with half a cup of red wine vinegar. Let's just, let's just make this easy and quick. All right, there we go. Half a cup of vinegar. All right. A couple shakes of hot sauce. I like a little spice in my quickle. Yeah, real quick. And then, so we're going to marry all that together in a container. We are going to do a tablespoon of salt. I know it seems like a lot, but that's part of pickling. And then we're going to do a half a tablespoon or a teaspoon and a half mm -hmm. of sugar. That balances out the super salt. So then we get that, we're gonna throw our onions right in there. Look at all this. So, I mean, you can make these and I love to keep um, things like pickled onions. You can pickle anything, but mm -hmm. you can make these and then just keep them in your fridge. Huh. So, and just. You just taught me how to pickle. I didn't know it was that easy. <laughs> there we go. Look at this, I'm pickling. All right, so step one, done. Um, and then let's think about our tortillas. Normally I would use corn tortillas and I would use ones that are more taco size, but mm -hmm. at my little local grocery <laughs> store, guess what? They didn't have them. So we're just gonna solve a problem. We're gonna take burrito size tortillas and these are flour. I like mm -hmm. corn better for tacos, but you know, I'm going with what I have. And look at this, I'm just gonna cut them in half. And there we go. So then we're gonna make the tacos that will roll up that way. Cool. Um, I'm gonna wrap these in aluminum foil and toss them in um, a warm oven, like about 250 degrees while I get the, my taco filling put together. Cool. So there we go. So they'll be really nice and soft and fluffy and pliable and delicious. So there we go. We'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so now let's get to the fun part. We'll start cooking. By the way, I, I love have, your mom's kitchen. <laughs> you, love, you love my mom's kitchen? Yes. I love my mom's kitchen too. <laughs> All right, so we have a little oil. We're going to start, uh, coat our pan like lightly, not crazy pants with oil. That's probably a couple of tablespoons of oil. I have one red onion that I diced and one jalapeno pepper. So we're gonna get that in there. We're gonna start sweating that. We think about what do you do when you sweat? You get hot, you let off water and you start to smell. That's what we're doing. We're start to, starting to develop some really nice flavors there. We're going to give a nice big sprinkle of salt. All right, we're gonna crank up our heat to really get this going. All right. Yeah, we wanna see some sizzle. We wanna see some deliciousness. All right, we give that just a second to really get heated up. The next thing that we're gonna add is some garlic, but I'm just gonna wait for a second for that. All right, so while I'm waiting for my onions to, uh, to in my pan and all this to heat up, I am going to whip together my lime crema. So I have some sour cream. I have a lime. I'm gonna use the juice and the zest of the lime. So the zest of the lime is just the colored part. You I have a it. Yeah, what do you got? If you don't have a zester, how do you do that? You can, so if you don't have one of these things, mm -hmm. you can use um, a box grater, like a cheese grater. Oh. Or if you wanna be very careful about things, you can take it and you can slice just off the colored part like that mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. your knife. And then you can chop it up feeny, 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 feeny. Oh, look at me. But I would recommend to buy one of these little grater things. They're so, you use them for a million different things. And then you don't have to spend your time doing that. But um, so, uh, and these things you can find everywhere and they don't cost very much at all. But you can use this for spices, for chocolate, for cheese, you know, for citrus zest. I mean, I use this thing, it's called a microplane. Um, I use this for all kinds of stuff. Can I just call uh, it a zester? <laughs> yes, you can. You can. Sure thing. 
So um, we have the zest of a lime, just the color part. Once you start to get to the to the white, stop. It's the pith and it's bitter and it doesn't taste that good. All right, so we're gonna cut our lime in half and we're just gonna juice it right in there. All right, so we have a nice tangy, sour, mm -hmm. creamy situation to put on top of our tacos. So I hear my onions doing great things and it's starting to smell delicious in here. I bet you guys wish you were here. Yes, I do. <laughs> so um, here we go. Yeah. Mm. Oh. And I can sort of smell the heat coming off the jalapenos too. That's good stuff. So my garlic I'm throwing right in there. Yeah, deliciousness. Oh my gosh. Like onions and garlic sauteing, I say is like a <laughs> chef's facial. Mm, it gets, it makes me happy every single time. It doesn't matter if I've just eaten a 12 course dinner, when I smell onions and garlic cooking, it makes me hungry all right oh, over again. I'm so jealous. All right, so there we go. Now we're going to add in the stems of my cilantro. I have the leaves that I've chopped up that I'm gonna finish with, but the, the stems of cilantro have tons of flavor and we're gonna get those in there to really be part of our flavor base of what's happening. Mm. All right, so cilantro stems, there we go. Now I have four boneless pork chops that I cut up into little tiny strips like that. Okay. okay. All right, we're gonna get those in. All right, nice big fat sprinkle of salt. Mm. Okay. Is that All right. regular salt or is it sea salt? Sorry? Is that regular salt or sea salt? So this is kosher salt. I always cook with kosher salt um, because the pieces of salt are themselves actually really big and it's much easier to control your salting. Good so there we go. So we can see the pork is cooking really quickly. All right. So get that going. So we're gonna let the pork cook just a little bit. Now I'm gonna add the zest and juice of two limes. All right, there we go. So we have a nice like tangy sourness that's happening along with our pork. Yes. All right. Man, I can totally do this. You can totally do this and it really is. I mean, I'm cooking this in real time. Yeah. It is this quick and easy. So my pork is just about cooked through and I'm gonna add um, some crushed tomatoes. Mm. Okay, there we go. And we are just gonna cook this until all of the, the liquid from the, uh, from the tomatoes and the lime and all that really clings to the pork. So it seems like saucy, but not soupy. Mm -hmm. Um, so look at my pork, you can tell when the pork is cooked, it's turned white. So I'm just gonna let that go for just another minute. And then I'm gonna taste it. I'm gonna adjust the salt if I need to. Um, and then I'm gonna assemble my tacos. Look That's how easy. easy that is. That is so easy because my tacos are always so boring. I just think I need to be a little more innovative when it comes to adding in different spices and flavors. So, I mean, this is like, if you like cumin, you could add cumin in here. I'm gonna add a little bit of chopped cilantro leaves to finish this as well. Um, and then I'm just gonna throw these. If you wanted to throw in like some corn kernels, you could do that. If you wanted to use chicken, you could do that or beef. This works beautifully with both of those. I mean, look at, and this doesn't have to be just a Tuesday taco or taco right. Tuesday. This is an everyday quick and easy taco and really satisfying. If you're not a taco fan, you could throw this over some rice or some, you know, put some beans in there too. Like this is just a very nice, like little basic jumping off point. I mean, especially for where we're at now, you could, for leftovers, switch up how you eat it. So like day one, you eat it as a taco, day two, put it on some rice. 
you could put it inside a quesadilla, yeah. you know, like you can go, you can, delicious. Oh yeah. That's some good stuff. I did a great job on this one. Hmm. I'm going to give it one more little sprinkle of salt. The lime, the lime is so bright and delicious. Mm, that makes me happy. All right. I'm going to finish with just a little tiny bit of cilantro. Okay, I mean, I'm just about done now. We're finishing. Okay, so here we go. My tortillas out of the oven. I'm just going to stir up my crema and I am ready to assemble and eat. Yay. All right, lime crema, and here we go. I'm very excited for this. Even Me though I'm too. so excited. Is this your family's uh, dinner today? <laughs> this is my family's dinner tonight. So here we go. Look at that. I have uh, a tortilla that I'm going to use. All right. We'll spoon that right in there. Okay. Yes. We'll top it with a little bit of the crema and my quickle <laughs> those guys <laughs> there oh, we go awesome. and then we'll sprinkle just a little bit more cilantro right on there and you know what i'm gonna eat this up right now past you in go for it yes huh? you did it. <laughs> yay <laughs> Delicious, really freaking hot, but so good. <laughs> yeah, it was like straight off the stove. Worth the burn, though. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can almost smell it, to be honest. And that oh. was actually really inspiring because I'm a big taco maker. Um, and I'm always looking for ways just to like amp it up. And that was easy enough. So this is easy enough. And you, there are plenty of ways that you can zhuzh this up. If you want to throw beans, you want to throw corn, you want to throw whatever else you want in there. You want to use chicken, you want to use beef, you want to use different tortillas, you want to skip the tortillas, put it on rice. But this is a super quick and easy, yummy kind of thing that's a giant crowd pleaser as well. Gotcha. And do you have, um, are you sharing recipes anywhere? Is there a place that people can go to just get a little more insight onto what to make? Um, I, I believe that I sent you guys the recipe. So if you would like to publish it, if you guys yeah. want to publish it on your site, you guys have the recipe. Awesome. Awesome. In the meantime, Vegas Chef Prize Fight airs tonight, right? Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern on Food Network. Uh, yeah. So we are excited to check that out tonight. Are we, gonna, I, we should do a little viewing party. I don't know. <laughs> Let's do a little viewing party. How about like Taco Thursday and Vegas Chef Prize Fight? Make a little that, margarita to go with it. That sounds perfect. Okay, I'll see you guys. <laughs> the show airs Food Network, 10 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you there. Thanks again, Anne. Thanks, you guys. Um, Stay distant, but stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.